Hey aviation students out there, um, my name's Carol. Um, a lot of you know me, I'm coming to you tonight from my Airstream studio. Some of you met me when I was first traveling across uh, the Western US giving check rides. Now um, I've settled in my home of Alaska for summers and Northern California in the winters. And uh, I am gonna start a series of videos to provide some guidance to CFIs and applicants about um, some of the things that I see consistently um, as reasons why I have to issue notices of disapproval for check rides. Now the reason for this is um, I decided that rather than debrief the same things over and over and over, that I'd rather get ahead of it and educate you all, okay? As you know, I'm not allowed to teach during a check ride, okay? Um, however, there is absolutely no prohibition against me um, instructing or teaching or mentoring outside of the check ride process. So that's what this is, okay? So um, if you found this, you're probably on my website, perhaps preparing for a check ride. Um, maybe you've just run across it on YouTube. Um, I hope that even if you aren't coming to me for a check ride, that you can find these videos uh, helpful and educational, um, not only to pass your check ride, but obviously much more importantly um, for your safe flying life as a pilot. Um, so let's get into it. So uh, skill number one, okay, for final stages of preparation for any check ride is, Get out your ACS, okay? You can get it um, in a printed format. You can get it for free from the FA website, okay? Um, you can download it to four flight. There's a lot of different ways, okay? Um, then you're going to read through it. Yeah, it's dry, okay? But this is the document from which you will be evaluated, okay? It's not somebody's opinion. It's all right here. Now let me explain a little bit to you about the guidance for DPEs. Um, here we have a page uh, from the flight instructor airplane category ACS. It's just what I happen to have a piece of here. Okay, it's the same for you're generally the same for all of these ACSs, PTSs, etc. Okay, um, at the top we have the area of operation, emergency operations, and then we have the various tasks. Um, that could be asked of you, okay? You need to be prepared for all of the tasks. Sometimes in some ACSs, the examiner is able to um, select some tasks and sometimes they have to do all. Um, and so that information is contained in the ACS if you read it carefully, either here at the top or in the addendums to each ACS, okay? Now, each ACS element um, or task element, right? Um, emergency descent, for instance, here. Uh, there, it's divided into knowledge, risk assessment, and skills. Okay, the examiner is required at a minimum to ensure that we uh, test you to make sure that you have at least one of these knowledge elements solid. Okay, in other words, we have to ask at least one thing here. Ensure one thing in knowledge. We have to ensure one element of risk management is met. Okay, two standard. And we have to ensure that all skills are met, all right, during the check ride. So this is very important information for you. You're going to need to know all of these things because you don't know which one the examiner is going to ask you about, okay? Um, but you know they're going to ask you and have you perform all skills because they're required to. Okay, now... How are you going to know more about how the FA wants to see these maneuvers done? Well, for the emergency descent, let's look up here. It has a wonderful references line up here. Now, there's no room to type out all the different names of the FA book, so they put the codes instead. All right, so here we see FAH 8083-3. Guess what? That is the Airplane Flying Handbook, which I downloaded to for flight. Guess what? As I search through it, I have made bookmarks for myself, all right? I'm gonna look up 
in my bookmarks, emergency descents. There they are, 18-8, okay? Here, you can read all about, in the Airplane Flying Handbook, whoop, how the FAA wants to see that done, okay? It also explains what are some of the reasons for emergency descents, why might you need to do this maneuver, etc. Now, the Airplane Flying Handbook is written in generalized language to apply um, to any aircraft, okay? It's a simplified version. Now, in your aircraft manual, you may or may not have a specific checklist or procedure for an emergency descent, okay? A lot of light aircraft do not have one exactly named that, so this can cause confusion for people. Now, Let's take, for instance, a Cessna 172. Oftentimes, when I see private pilots come to me for a check ride, um, they're unaware of any type of emergency, emergency descent other than that prescribed by the 172 manual in case of an engine fire, okay? Well, it's great that they know that. That's awesome. Um, but there are many different types of emergency descents that you might need to do, and there's different ways to do them, okay? The important thing for you to know is, remember what I told you about, you're gonna need to know and perform all skills? Look here, he says, applicant uses a bank angle between 30 and 45 degrees to maintain positive load factors during the descent, all right? And there's a number of other things. Well, if you look at the Cessna manual, it doesn't include a bank. It just says, A, uh, if the fire's not out, uh, point the nose down, descend it 100 knots, and try to extinguish uh, the flames by making an incombustible mixture. Well, if an applicant doesn't do the bank, then technically the examiner cannot allow them to pass because here is what it says right in the ACS. Thou shalt do it this way, okay? Um, when there is a disagreement or confusion between the various resources that we have or the references that the ACS gives us, know that, okay, unless your aircraft manual says something specifically that negates or does not allow for these items, you need to do it this way, okay? Um, if you did fly an airplane that said, hey, um, that had an emergency descent checklist from the manufacturer in it, and in the manual or POH it said, emergency descent, thou shalt do it this way. Then guess what? That's what you're going to do because that's controlling in this situation. All right. Um, now, do I expect a private pilot applicant to understand these fine points between all these different documents? Not really. <laughs> do I expect their instructors to at least have some idea? Yes, I do. But you know, across the board, I see instructors who haven't even read this part of the ACS. And you know what I've seen before? Sadly, multiple times I've had people come to me as a commercial pilot applicant and not have any idea that an emergency descent was going to be a part of the check ride at all. That is unacceptable because it shows an utter ignorance of the very items that the CFI is supposed to be aware of and is supposed to be making sure that their applicant can do before they are endorsed for the check ride. okay? So that's why I'm doing this particular video about the emergency descent because it is a, just a problem across the board with um, what I've seen for private and commercial applicants and also uh, I think a lot of other DPs have had this issue too. And it's understandable because it is somewhat confusing. You have to really understand how to read through all these items, okay? And you have to care enough to read them in the first place. So that's why I'm making this video is to let you know that these resources are there for you. 
um, CFIs, you are expected to care enough to read the ACS, the Airplane Flying Handbook, and the POH or manual, and you are expected to know those items and explain how <laughs> those items work to your students, okay? Now, the best thing you can do is to empower your student, once you show them how to use these various documents, okay, is have them do it for themselves, all right? Because there's no amount of spoon feeding that you could give your students that's gonna get the information inside their head, which is where it has to be, and no one else is responsible for that ultimately than the student, okay? So empower your students, put it back on them to say, okay, great. Now, I would like you, um, you're gonna read today, for instance, um, come to me with your questions about emergency descents that you have read prior to our lesson from the Airplane Flying Handbook, okay? Then we're gonna do a pre-brief, then we're gonna go out and fly it, then we're gonna do a debrief, okay? This is effective. In fact, this is what we're supposed to do as instructors. So, uh, <laughs> um, now those of you who know me, you know um, I am cheering for you. Um, uh, continue learning, continue growing. That's what we do as aviators is all the time. We find out that we were doing something wrong or I had a hole in my knowledge or in how I executed that maneuver. That's okay. Um, you know what? I still got holes that I don't know, all right? Nobody's got all of the corner on every bit of knowledge in aviation. Um, if they say they do, they're lying, okay? So um, uh, do your homework, guys. Um, take your job seriously. I am cheering for you, and I can't wait to see you around, and we're going to um, keep improving flight training and testing. Thanks for listening.